This is the new iPhone 13 and 13 mini. They have new cameras, a bigger battery, more storage, a brighter screen, and Apple's new A15 Bionic chip, all for the same price. And that seems very reasonable to me. Apple simplified its lineup for 2021. For all intents and purposes, there are two phones, the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 Pro. You want a small version of the 13? Get a 13 mini. You need a 13 Pro with a bigger screen and battery? Get the 13 Pro Max. In the case of the iPhone 13 and 13 mini, you get a reasonable upgrade to the iPhone 12 and 12 mini, which were already wonderful phones. Now, there will be some that had hoped that the iPhone would be a little more splashy and radical. And in that case, take a look at the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. And by the way, I'm just gonna focus on the 13 and 13 mini in this video. And I did an entire separate review video for the 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max, which you can check out. The iPhone 13 starts at $829 and the iPhone 13 mini at $729. And that's the price of the base model that comes with 128 gigabytes of storage. Also, if you buy and activate your phone on a carrier plan, that price drops $30. And all that is before some truly wild deals from carriers. Last year's iPhone 12 is still around at a lower price. And if you are upgrading from an iPhone 11 or older, consider this. The iPhone 12 with 128 gigabytes is now only $50 less than the iPhone 13, meaning Apple really makes it easy for you to climb that upgrade ladder right up to the 13. Now, Apple's clever pricing aside, I definitely believe you get more than $50 worth of improvements by going to the iPhone 13. The new phones have the same flat-sided slabular design as the iPhone 12 and 12 mini, they come in five colors, blue, starlight, product red, midnight, which is the color of the 13 mini I tested. Now it's hard to tell, but the mini actually has an indigo hue to it. And the last color is pink, which is the color of the iPhone 13 I tested. It's got a nice soft pink color and in certain lighting can look almost white. Aside from the colors, there are two key differences in terms of design. The first is a new camera bump, which now positions the cameras diagonally. It's funny how that one change already has people clued in. When I was testing it out and about, I had several people stop and ask if this was the new iPhone. The next change is more subtle. The notch is less wide. It's still a notch and I still have a love-hate relationship with it aesthetically, but I'll take it being 20% smaller. Other than that, the phones have the same ceramic shield covering over the display, the same IP68 rating for dust and water resistance, meaning they can survive being submerged six meters, about 20 feet for 30 minutes. Both the 13 and 13 mini had no trouble surviving an unexpected drench from an impromptu afternoon thunderstorm. Technically, both phones are heavier, and I, to be honest, didn't know that until I read the spec sheet. And if that extra seven to 10 grams has anything to do with it having a bigger battery, I welcome the extra weight. Now I only had five days with the phones, but both the iPhone 13 and 13 mini had no trouble making it through a day on a single charge. Now I do own an iPhone 12 mini and I know the reality of the 3 p.m. recharge. And I hadn't experienced that so far with the 13 mini. Now I'm putting both phones through CNET's battery tests and will update my written review with the final results. On the front of the 13 is a 6.1 inch display and a 5.4 inch one on the 13 mini. Both are OLED panels, just like the 12 and 12 mini. Now you may have heard this year that some of the iPhones got an upgrade to a high refresh rate. It's only on the pro models, but the 13 and 13 mini did get a noticeable increase in brightness. And that is a welcomed improvement because you're gonna be using it a lot to take photos and record videos, especially with these new cameras. The wide angle camera gets a larger camera sensor with sensor-based stabilization. Apple says that it's the size of the camera module that is one of the reasons the cameras are now arranged diagonally on the back of the phone. To give you perspective, the main cameras on the iPhone 13 have the same size pixels as the main camera on last year's iPhone 12 Pro Max, which at the time 
had the largest sensor for any iPhone. The ultra-wide camera gets a new sensor, which helps it gather more light. In use, these aren't drastic differences, but I definitely noticed the improvements. There's less image noise in photos I take in medium lighting. And here, take a look at some of my favorite photos that I took with the iPhone 13 and 13 mini. Let's talk about one of the most hyped new camera features, cinematic mode. And I've got to say, this is so much fun to use and experiment with. Cinematic mode is kind of like portrait mode for video, but as opposed to making the background have an artistic blur, cinematic mode can focus from one subject, like this cellist, to another, like this violinist, leaving either the background or foreground out of focus. The effect is dramatic, and nearly everyone I showed the videos to were awestruck. Cinematic mode captures 1080p video at 30 frames per second using the two cameras on the back stereoscopically. The iPhone can choose who to focus on, when to focus on someone else, but you can also focus during the recording or even change the focus after you record the video, which, <laughs> wow, it's pretty cool. Now, if the cutout effect is too much, you can adjust the aperture, aka the depth of field. The results are nice, and I imagine after using it for a while, you'll know where the limits are. And there are a few. First, you can't use cinematic mode when it's dark. You'll be greeted with a message prompting you to turn on your flash. Editing the videos is straightforward enough, but the controls for the keyframes where you change the focus are very small. You can long press to expand the timeline, but it shrinks back to a normal size timeline as soon as you let go. So it makes it impossible to have a zoomed in view of those tiny focus keyframes. Another nice addition is called photography styles. And what this does is changes the appearance of the photos you take to your preference. So if you always add a little more contrast to your photos before uploading them, you can set your camera to rich contrast. And any photo you take in that mode will have that look baked in. And there are four photography styles, vibrant, rich contrast, warm, and cool. If you don't wanna use any of these, you can leave your camera set to standard. Also, what's cool is in the camera app, you can dial in the tone and warmth for each photography style to your preference. Now, these styles aren't a filter. The upside is it's smart about giving photos the look you want without, for example, making someone's skin look like an Oompa Loompa. The downside is that it's baked into your photos and you can't undo it. It's not as scary as it sounds and there's always editing settings to compensate after the fact. On the whole, the cameras are solid. Now powering all of this camera magic and the phone is the A15 Bionic chip. In my time with the phone, it handled everything from gaming, video and photo edits, and all this being done in a variety of cool and hot and humid environments. The iPhone 13 and 13 mini run iOS 15, which in my time worked well. If you want a deeper dive into iOS 15 and my experience with features like focus mode, check out my iOS 15 best features video. After five days, that's all I've got. If you wanna learn even more about the iPhone 13 and 13 mini or buy one, check out the links in the description. Also, we're gonna have a lot more coverage on the phones and putting them through more camera, battery, and drop tests in coming weeks. But now, I wanna hear from you. What do you think of the 13 and 13 mini? Are you planning on getting one? And if so, which one? You gonna go small this year or are you gonna stay with the normal size? Throw your thoughts in the comments.